quantum jumping. Specifically, the version that is commonly referred to as reality shifting is the act of moving your awareness from one energy level to another. The idea behind quantum jumping is that we are currently living in a multiverse of parallel universes and with enough intention and energy, one can become aware of their desired reality. The topic of reality shifting has blown up online with millions of people across social media platforms such as TikTok, Amino and Reddit creating their own communities and spreading more awareness and information on the subject. Unfortunately, a lot of this information is severely misleading or false, which is why it is strongly advised to take the time to research the subject outside of social media before forming any opinions. Due to this rise in popularity, more and more people have been able to expand their awareness of the possibilities a quantum jump can give you. Reality shifting seems almost too good to be true, but the proof is practically undeniable. I'm Poppy, and today I'll be delving into the logic behind quantum jumping to show the science behind the phenomenon known as reality shifting. This is for those who struggle to grasp the concept, to both help guide curious minds and inform the public of what the term really means. I will also be discussing quantum jumping with a reality shifter, talking about the importance of vital information, common misconceptions and more. Quantum jumping is the state of shifting your consciousness into a different state of mind, bypassing the rules of time and space to shift your perception of the hologram or the universe we currently reside in. To put it simply, your conscious mind travels to a specific desired reality, whether that be an improved version of your current life or to a fictional place, maybe a specific film or book franchise such as the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings and countless more. Your physical body stays put in this reality, but mentally, you're in another body, almost like a host. When you have successfully shifted, it is said that you will have memories of an entire life in this new reality, as if you have always been there, which a part of you technically has. This can be daunting, but it's nothing to fear. The multiverse theory has existed for countless years, stating that billions of different versions of you exist. So in theory, it's not as crazy as it seems. In fact, it almost makes perfect sense. To quantum jump, you need a strong awareness of another reality and the intention to shift there. The fact that it already exists will only make it easier for your brain to comprehend. The whole topic of quantum jumping is a lot to take in. Not to mention severely lacking in terms of factually correct publicity due to misinformation and negativity. A common misconception is that quantum jumping is the same as lucid dreaming or astral projection, but there is plenty of evidence to discredit that, including the once classified CIA documents on the Gateway experience. To understand the differences, we must first understand the basic definitions of both lucid dreaming and astral projection. Lucid dreaming is what occurs when you become aware of your consciousness and the fact that you're dreaming whilst inside a dream. From this, you may gain control over certain areas of the dream, such as the narrative and location. An obvious difference between reality shifting and lucid dreaming is that a lucid dream is somewhat blurry, with time running differently and words being difficult to read. With reality shifting, the reality feels the same as it would right now. Time occurs naturally, your five senses would work the same as they do now, and you only have control over what your body does rather than everything like in a lucid dream. Astral projection is an outer body experience where the consciousness essentially separates from the physical body and can travel throughout the universe. The key difference here is that with astral projection, you're limited to this reality only and there are some risks involved depending on what you expose yourself to. Reality shifting gives you the opportunity to explore a multitude of different realities, but you have more control over any potential dangers you could come across because you're shifting to a reality of your choice. The Gateway Experience is a technique which the CIA studied, reported and documented in 1983. It is a training system dedicated to focusing brainwave output to alter consciousness and escape the restrictions of time and space, much alike to how quantum jumping works. The idea is to stimulate the brain functions using audio techniques on a series of tapes developed by a radio broadcasting executive named Bob Monroe until the left and right hemispheres of the brain become synchronised. This is also known as hemisync. From this state, the mind will gain enhanced strength, focus and coherence to alter consciousness and synchronise with the rarefied energy levels of the universe. 
From the report that the CIA created, it appears that they were successful in their attempts to reach this state of consciousness. The document also hints at the multiverse theory, with mentions of various intervening dimensions that altered states of human consciousness may gain access to cropping up often in the report. Overall, the document is a fascinatingly compelling read and has many interesting points that confirm the theory of quantum jumping. To achieve the state of quantum jumping, there are countless theories and methods suggested, but the most general rule of thumb is that meditation, intent and focus are key, though they're not required. A crucial piece of information to know is that there are two hemispheres in your brain, the left and the right. The left side is your logical, analytical mind and controls your most fundamental thoughts. The right side manages your creativity, imagination and insight. To get into the state encouraged for quantum jumping, it's suggested to shut down the left side by boring it with pointless tasks such as counting or controlling your breathing pace. By boring the left hemisphere, you're essentially shutting your body down for sleep, leaving your creative mind active and more prone to successfully shifting your perception of reality. And now I'll be talking with a fellow reality shifter to discuss the truths and myths behind quantum jumping. Do you prefer the term reality shifting or quantum jumping? Um, I actually like them both equally. Quantum jumping is essentially the origins of reality shifting. And then as time went on, especially during like the 2000s, uh, reality shifting kind of replaced quantum jumping. So it was more of an easily digestible concept for people because the idea of quantum jumping at the time was not complex, but riddled with a lot of bold and hard vocabulary for people to understand so reality shifting made it simpler but quantum jumping is essentially the origins of it so I think they both have their pros and cons but I like them both equally for sure yeah so how did you find out about reality shifting what does the term mean to you and sweet uh I found out about reality shifting through TikTok but I did outside research so I looked up um things on quantum jumping and really trying to focus on the consciousness of it and everything so i've heard from it through tiktok did outside research to better understand it and what that term means to me is essentially the idea of traveling the multiverse essentially and being aware of your different consciousness across multiple timelines and it's the kind of granting yourself the permission to allow yourself to travel. It's also, to me, a term that helps get rid of the stigma of these types of things, such as quantum jumping, astral projection, hypnosis, all that, you know, it, it breaks that stigma apart because it makes it ground, it grounds it in reality because that's what you're doing. You're grounding yourself in a new reality. There yeah. is no focus there. It's very much kind of like, all right, it's a leap of faith, but also understand that it is extremely real, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, so what are some things you wished you knew more about on the subject when you first learned about it? Like, is there anything you'd change? Absolutely. Um, I wish I had understood exactly what reality shifting and quantum jumping could do. When yeah. I had... It, I had just thought oh it's just going to your favorite tv show or your favorite books or stuff like that but it's not it's it's the opportunity to get the answer to so many questions that you have it's going to a place and learning a new skill such as playing the violin or learning how to sing figure skating it's helping writers with their writer's block so say if you're writing a huge book and you don't know how you want to end it you can shift and shift into a reality where you find that perfect ending. It's reality shifting to me, which I wish I knew about when I very first started was, it's a gateway to bettering your life here because it gives you the answers that you need. As long as you concentrate hard enough and you push for that reality that you want to manifest, it really helps you kind of get everything in order here because it gives you the answers that you may not be able to find right away. Yeah. Finally, are there any pieces of information that often get misinterpreted or ignored that you think are important to know? Yes, um, one of them being that reality shifting is lucid dreaming. Yeah. Um, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm sure 
from going with it because it's one of the biggest misconceptions. And I have another one as well that I will mention early, um, later on. However, uh, the difference between reality shifting and lucid dreaming is that reality shifting is done either awake or asleep. There's different methods to achieve this shift in consciousness into a new reality. Lucid dreaming is only achieved through going to sleep and doing a reality check within that dream in order to trigger the lucid dream. And it also was found in studies that lucid dream for many is really hard to achieve. So if we're looking at it that way, you have to understand that lucid dreaming, you have to fall asleep in order to achieve it. Reality shifting, on the other hand, that's done either awake or asleep. And mm -hmm. if you you can do it within seconds and not even have to fall asleep at all just close your eyes, become aware of your new reality, and you'll be there. When you master it, it becomes very easy. Lucid dreaming, there are restrictions. You can't touch your hands. You can't count your fingers. You can't do anything that actually is physical. However, when you shift realities, when you are in this new state, you feel everything the way that you do here. The big key to understanding reality shifting is that when you go there, you will feel pain just as you feel it here. You will feel your skin just as you feel it here. You will breathe air just as you feel it here. Lucid dreaming, you don't have that. You can't breathe in through your nose and you can't touch your fingers and you can't count them either. It's a dream. It's a dreamscape. Reality yeah. shifting is a real world. You're, you're going somewhere else. Um, also, another misconception that I was getting is that lucid dreaming or not lucid dreaming, but reality shifting, it triggers these mental health issues. A lot of the mental health issues that um, are being talked about and that reality shifting triggers, a lot of those stem from trauma, actually. So maladaptive daydreaming can, be, can happen when you've been extremely traumatized and you use that as a coping mechanism, as well as uh, other ones. And schizophrenia, I've heard, is a huge one that is going around, however, people also have to understand you can't claim to have schizophrenia without having it be properly diagnosed yeah. by a doctor so it's very very important that as a reality shifter or as someone who is joining uh, joining this community that you have a strong hold on where your mental state is at and understanding exactly what's going on in your own brain because sometimes reality shifting is not going to cause something but it may actually force you to face something. So yeah. say that you are someone who maladaptive daydreams and you realize that you have gotten maladaptive daydreaming through reality shifting. No, you just exasperated that because you've, you've already had it. You just didn't realize it, but now you're more aware of it because you're actively trying to connect to your desired reality do, through these visualizations. And from there, you can actually get the help that you need. And so it's very much setting the groundwork for you and asking yourself, where am I mentally? What are some of the things that I should look out for? And understanding that reality shifting doesn't cause any of these illnesses. They don't cause any of these disorders. These disorders were already there to begin with. So yeah. that is something that will be like, honey, this didn't happen because I wanted to like shift to Hogwarts. This was already a part of you and you need to get the help that you need in order to like fix it. And if done in a certain way, reality shifting can actually help with a lot of these issues when it comes to dissociation, depersonalization, because it forces you to become present in your body. It forces you be, to become as aware of your surroundings as possible, which is how you help yourself get out of depersonalization and dissociation. So it's really coming down to, it's not lucid dreaming, and it also doesn't cause a lot of these disorders that people claim it does. Yeah, okay. thank you. I was just going to say as well, a lot of people, they call it a trend. And I think they do that with the mental illnesses as well. Because like you said, a lot of people are linking the two, but they're thinking that they're both things that you just jump onto for a phase. Yeah. And that's like a big issue for a lot of kids as well. I agree. It's interesting to see because, because of my following on TikTok, and the community that I've created, a lot of people on it are kids. Yeah. And you are completely right when it comes to like the phases and stuff like that and it being a phase because 
it's easy to claim that you have a mental illness at a young age, just mm -hmm. reaction of others and not entirely know the consequences of your actions. However, it also has been used by people who may be a little older in order to discourage others from doing this because of the lack of information there. And the whole idea of reality shifting being a trend and a phase, it's not because like creators on TikTok have used shifting as a way to better themselves, to work on their traumas, to help others. Not only that, but a lot of us actually are out there trying to help raise the self-esteem of a lot of people who may not have it to begin with. And it's, yeah. for us creators at least, it's not a phase. It's something that we truly enjoy and truly love doing. Mm -hmm. But sadly, with it does come kind of this connotation of mental health, mental illness, and children being easily manipulated. When in reality, that's not really the case. Sadly, mm -hmm. it's it's more of the people who hate on the concept that are manipulating the kids yeah. when and yeah. you are the ones actually trying to help them in order to better them and have them have more confident and healthy lives. Is this a new era of scientific breakthroughs and the way we view the world? And if so, what does this mean for the future of our society? Hopefully this documentary gave you more of an insight into quantum jumping and the science behind it. If, like me, you're open to the unknown, you'll find that the mind is one of the most incredible treasures of the universe and that quantum jumping is one of the many amazing ways to achieve your highest potential.